hybrid or crossover? Are you curious to know which club you should be playing? Well, watch this video and you're gonna find out so much more about the two different options. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. I have a three hybrid versus three crossover challenge. Both are the Ping G425, new for Ping in 2021. I'm excited to test these models out and compare the differences, but also explain whether you should be playing a hybrid in your bag or whether you should be playing a crossover in your bag. There's definitely some differences between the two models and we're going to explain that as we hear some shots. We'll be taking a look at spin, we'll be taking a look at height, and we're taking a look at forgiveness as well. So I'm ready to get after hit some shots. Let's hit some Ping G425 crossovers and hybrids. So I'm gonna hit 10 shots total with each model. So the crossover and the hybrid, this will be 20 total shots. This will be plenty of data to talk about the differences between each model. I'm gonna hit five with each model to start off, and then we'll talk about the looks, the feel, and the differences, and then we'll hit five more to really give some conclusive data. Let's get after it. So we're five shots into this test. I'm gonna hit 10 shots total with each one. So we're halfway through. Let's talk about differences between the two models. So the Ping G425 crossover is very loud. Very, very loud when you, and especially in this inside environment, very loud echo. While the G425 hybrid is not quite as loud. Talking about forgiveness, the G425 forgiveness was pretty good. I had a couple of misses and they didn't quite catch perfect, but both still flew nice and high. The crossover, you have to hit it well. Now I hit four very, very good shots with the crossover that were very, very close together and had one that I kind of pulled over there to the left. I haven't played a hybrid in my bag for a good couple of years now, and there's good reason. I have a little harder time to control the club face with the hybrid, and there's a reason why I play a driving iron or a crossover, because I feel it easier for me to hit the ball a little bit straighter. But there's gonna be differences in height, there's gonna be differences in spin between the two of them. So let's take a look at the numbers real briefly. So, first thing we'll notice with the hybrid is I was able to generate a little bit more club speed. That's because the club head is a little bit lighter than the crossover head. Now these both are the Ping 85S Ping Tour golf shaft, so the exact, exact same golf shaft. The club head's just a little bit lighter with the hybrid versus the, versus the crossover. So you can see that I picked up almost four miles an hour more ball speed with the G425 hybrid. Launched a little bit higher, launched about half a degree higher. Now I did also modify the G425 hybrid to 20 degrees. So this is a three hybrid. The reason I did that is because the Ping G425 crossover is 20 degrees. It's just a bonded hosel where the nice thing with the hybrid is you can adjust it up or down and loft a little bit there too. So they're both 20 degree settings. Interesting, carry distance was the exact same. That's really, really interesting. But you'll notice that the spin rate was about 600 RPMs higher with the hybrid. And that's because the center of gravity is pushed back with the hybrid where with the crossover, there's not as much, there's not much room to push this club back. It just is what it is. It's more of an iron looking club where the, where the hybrid's gonna be more of a wood looking club there as well. We'll take a look, let's see what happens when there is less spin, the ball rolled out further with the crossover. When there was more spin, the ball stopped faster with the hybrid. So it depends on what you're trying to achieve with each club. Better stopping valve with the hybrid, a little bit more rollout with the crossover. If we take a quick look at the height before we hit more shots, we'll notice that the hybrid was flying 20 feet higher in the air than the crossovers. That also touches on that stopping power. You can see that landing angle was about five degrees steeper with the hybrid than with the crossover. And that's only five shots. Let's hit five more with each one and then let's finalize the data.
So speaking of forgiveness, so I wanted to stop here for a second and just talk about this last shot that I hit. This is with the hybrid. So I did not hit this one very well. You'll notice that my ball speed dropped quite significantly. You'll notice the spin rate dropped quite significantly. I caught a little bit on the toe side. But if we take a look at the dispersion pattern on the right side, notice how the carry distance was still the same. So that's just showing the importance of forgiveness with the hybrid over playing maybe the crossover instead. So you get away with some misses a little bit more with the hybrid. I just wanted to stop here because the spin rate, this is the first time we've seen the spin rate under 3000. That's because I mishit the ball. That's not so much the club that's causing the ball to spin less. So forgiveness is key with the hybrids. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> so it feels like one out of <laughs> one out of ten straight. Okay, time to ruin the dispersion pattern with the crossover. Look at the same bow flight every time. Save best for last. Pretty nice right there, yeah. So now that we have 10 shots with each club, this is plenty of data to really conclusively say certain clubs are performing differently with regards to their characteristics. So if we take a look here, you can see that the hybrid generated a little bit more ball speed than the crossover. We're talking about two miles an hour faster, even though the club speed was only about 0.7 miles an hour faster. There's two. So Take a look at the smash factor. The efficiency was a little bit higher with the hybrid. Kind of interesting. It was also launching a little bit higher than the crossover as well. It was launching a degree, a little bit over a degree higher with the hybrid than with the crossover. Then we kind of see a little bit of a flip-flop. The crossover did spin, just like before, about 600 RPMs less than the hybrid. So we're talking just under 3,000 with the crossover about 35, 3600 with the hybrid. We take a look at the carry distance. Once again, carry distance is pretty close. We're talking within a yard between the two of them. So you can see that over on the right side with regards to carry distance. I want to take a look at total distance though because the ball is definitely releasing out a little bit more with the crossover because we have 600 RPMs less spin. So if we take a look and see what happens if we switch this to total distance, you notice now that white circle is now rolling out a little bit further. So this is more kind of like a driving light club, still flying high enough in the air to stop the ball in the green on softer par 5 greens, but it's going to come in and it's going to roll out a little bit more. Where the hybrid is going to come into the green and it's going to definitely stop on the green a lot faster because that spin is going to help you out. So what was the difference? So if we look at the crossover, we're talking 248 carry, going 269. So we're talking about 20, 21 yards difference. If we look at the hybrid, we're looking at 248 carry to going 261. So it was stopped within about 13 yards. So seven yards better stopping power with the hybrid or seven yards more rail out with the crossover. So that's kind of the difference there between these two. They're designed to fly a little bit higher with the hybrid, be a little bit more forgiving where the crossover is designed to just fly on a little bit lower. If we take a look at the total height that the ball was flying. It was, yeah, it was about 20, 25 feet lower in the air with the crossover. We're talking 105 feet in the air versus about 129 so with, the, with the hybrid. So that's quite significant. But what's really interesting is, now there's a reason why I've been playing a driving iron in my bag the last two or three years, because I feel like I can get the ball in the fairway better with the, with the crossover slash hybrid. And you can kind of see this up on this dispersion pattern. So white circles, a little bit straighter. So I was able to have better club face control with the crossover than with the hybrid. And that's probably part of the reason to do with the ball not getting quite as high up in the air, not spinning as much. It was just kind of a low penetrating chaser golf ball. And that's all I'm trying to do with my, with my driving iron, with my crossover. I'm not trying to hit it super high up in the air. Now they are designed to be forgiving. To, if you want to hit a golf shot higher, you can definitely try and hit it higher. But for me, I'm just trying to think, have this thing go out about 270 yards at the, at the most. Just something that's going to chase out there, be in position, be in the fairway, so then I can leave myself a great second shot into the green. It's also kind of interesting with the hybrid when I was hitting it. I only had one really that ended up pretty straight. I had probably about six circles to the left, three to the right, and then one that was smack kind of right in the middle there too. So 
For me, I know crossover is a good play for me. But for slower swing speed golfers, maybe golfers that need a little help to get the ball up in the air, hybrid is definitely a great option. It's a great option to replace your longer irons in your bag. It's a great option to connect your fairy woods to your longer irons in your bag and have that club that's going to gap nicely in between. So important to take a look at these numbers, important to compare the two different clubs depending on what you're looking for in your golf game. At second swing, we can help you. So if it's second swing, you can definitely come on in for a club fitting or you can work with someone online at secondswing.com. So come on in to second swing and get fit like a pro.